In Luminar 4.2 you will find a new filter, the AI Augmented Sky. And with this filter you can add different objects to your sky. In this video I will explain you what you can add and how it exactly works. If you are a Luminar 4 user and you don't see this new filter yet, go to help, click in check for updates and Luminar will tell you there is a new update. So what this filter is, I will show it with a few photos. Let's start with this first photo. It's a photo taken in Iceland and the sky is very empty and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you think the sky is too boring, you can add some extra elements. So one of the objects you can add are birds. So let's select birds one to see what happens. So as you can see, a lot of birds are added to the sky and it looks pretty good because if you look for, let's zoom in here in the tower, here you can see a part of the bird, but most of, most of it is behind the church. So Luminar really makes a good cut of your object and only places the birds in the sky. So I think that's Luminar is doing a really good job in that. If you want to move the birds, it's also possible. Click here at place object and you see a selection area around the birds and you can easily drag the birds to whatever location you want. If you think the birds are too big or too small, you can also adjust that. So just go to the corner, you can make the area smaller and the result is you will end up with smaller birds or bigger birds. All right, so there are three options. Um, if we look at birds, so birds two and birds three, I think this one works pretty nice for this photo just to add some interesting elements in the sky. Also good to know is that the object you place in the sky, you can adjust it a little bit. So first of all, yeah, the amount you can change. It's not the amount of birds in this case, but it's the visibility. So suppose you have a very foggy sky, it's possible to uh, decrease the visibility of the birds so it blends in more naturally with your photograph. You can also change the warmth. So if you add the birds to a very warm sky, a sunset sky, you can increase the warmth or you can cool them down. Also to make sure they blend in very well and there's a possibility to relight. So also here you can see that the birds are less visible with a high value for relight or are better visible with a low value. There are also some advanced settings. It's more about uh, the mask refinement. So if it doesn't blend in very well and you see some strange edges, uh, usually you, you go here to mask refinements to uh, have a better blend. You'll see that later with some other objects. So let's go to another photo to show you some other things you can add. Let's go to this photo. Um, let's see, we have clouds we can add. We can uh, add an eagle, fireworks, a lightning moon, mountains even, planets, rainbow. So there are a lot of options. Let's try the rainbow. Let's see what happens. So the rainbow is added in the middle of the frame. So let's replace it to well, more to the left. And it's not a very clear rainbow, so it blends in quite well. Although you see that the sky gets a bit dark in the edges. So that's something to take care of. Let's see if we can change that with the mask refinements. That doesn't do so much. So although you can add extra objects, uh, I tried it with server photos already. Sometimes it works perfectly. Sometimes it's really hard to make it look natural. Ah. So with the amount, you can see that it works better. 
Uh, also here you can do real light bond. So with rainbow you have the same options as the other objects. Rainbow 2 is a different type of rainbow. You can see in fact the whole rainbow. Uh, you can also of course increase this area if you think this is not nice and you can replace it. So with the two options you have for rainbow you can do already quite a lot. So it's even possible to add mountains and my experience so far is that you really need a clear sky, a clear horizon uh, to blend it in, in a very nice way. So if you try it for a photo like this, it doesn't work because Luminar has some problems with detecting all the mountains. So here you can see in the horizon that a part of the original photo is still visible. You can of course try to solve that with uh, mask refinements and you see that it gets a bit better but if you zoom in you can still see oh, it actually does a pretty good job now. But you have to be careful so if you want to add something like this really look it in those areas to see if it blends in in a good way. So as you can see you can yeah, change your photograph in a very dramatic way. I have to say it's not a, a type of editing I do like uh, so I don't see myself using this uh, augmented sky filter that often I guess but I can assume the creative people really love to do this. Uh, on the other hand if you have a very boring photo and you want to add some cloud or a bird it can make the photo look more interesting. So let's try to add some clouds. Um, I will use another photo for that. Let's use this photograph. So there is already a cloud but suppose we want to well let's do this photo because there is more clear sky in this photo. So let's try to add the cloud in the right top. My experience so far with adding clouds is that you shouldn't blend them with the original clouds. If you do that it gets very dark. So let's replace it a little bit here. So you can see very dark edges where both clouds are meeting each other. So that doesn't work but if you put the cloud in a clear sky as you can see it works very very well. Uh, also here you can relight uh, it so it matches the other clouds and the, the landscape. So this is a pretty easy object to blend in in a really nice way if your skies are too clear. There's of course one thing I should uh, mention when you start doing uh, adding clouds. There is a, a warning I want to give because this cloud is of course from another photograph. So they cut out the, the cloud and they make it like um, an object with a transparent background and that's why you can easily put it on top of your original photograph. The only thing is like this photo for example is taken with a Sony A7R 3 so it's a 42 megapixel camera and this cloud maybe is not taken with a 42 megapixel camera. So the result is that the clouds maybe look more grainy or less sharp than the original clouds. And that's already what you can see here. So the quality of this cloud is not equal to the mountains and uh, the clouds you can see right here. So in fact if you want to start adding objects it works pretty well uh, for photos if you want to show them online but if you want to make large prints don't do it because it will ruin your photo. So be really careful for that. Another photo I want to show you is let's undo this go back to the library this photograph I took it in Iceland um, the northern lights well they were there a bit but hardly visible so it was a very disappointing night. Uh, I tried to take some photos uh, some lights show up here in the sky it basically looks more like clouds than the northern light itself but yeah uh, that was the best we, could, we were able to see but here you have Aurora 1 which means you can add the northern light. 
As you can see, the, the blend is terrible uh, right now, but we can replace the object. We can do mass refinement. And as you can see, the blend gets better. I'm not sure why it has such a hard edge here. Let's make it a bit smaller. Ah, that looks better already. So, it's an easy way to add some northern light to your photograph. Also here, warmed. You can make it warmer, you can make it cooler, uh, whatever you want. There's only one Aurora you can add, so be careful, don't do that for every photo, then every photo will have the same northern light and of course other Lumiere users are also going to use this so yeah you have to ask yourself if you want to use the objects because your objects will be visible in more and more photographs um, other things you can add you can add airplanes and uh, there are two airplanes you can add even planets kind of funny <laughs> um, you can add the moon I have seen two moons one and number two so that's also very nice you can add fireworks pretty amazing not sure why it cuts off the, the photo here i think the selection of the sky is not very accurate for this photograph but you get the point so let's show some other examples here so the airplane was there, the, the fireworks, well the fireworks doesn't look nice in this photograph. Um, lightning, also your photo, no, needs to be a dark photo to make it very visible. It's actually pretty funny, all the things you can do. The eagle, look at that, also nice. And one very nice thing, and that's maybe the best way of using uh, this filter, is to load your custom image. So suppose you took some really nice photos of birds in Photoshop, uh, you can cut them out uh, as an object and put it in a transparent background. And after you've done that, you can load your own images here to put it in your photographs. So I think, uh, I hope this video gave you a clear view of what the possibilities are with IA Augmented Sky. Uh, let me know what you think about this video and about this filter. And yeah, really, it will be really interesting to read all your comments. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Uh, in the upcoming weeks, we will upload more videos about Luminar, also about other filters. So keep an eye on our website and YouTube channel and see you in the next one. Do you want to learn more about Lumina 4? Please go to our website rosterphoto.com, go to the blog section, select Luminar tutorials, and here you can see all Luminar tutorials we have created so far. If you go to the menu and go to giveaways, you can also go to free Luminar shortcuts cheat sheet. You end up in this page where you can download a nice shortcut cheat sheet, and that's a very easy way to learn all the keyboard shortcuts you can use in Lumina 4. There are two versions, one for Mac and one for Windows.